I had no idea what the Quran was. I thought it was like the Muslim Bible or something. I did not realize that this was the direct word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, right? And that blew my mind. My mind was getting blown every Friday and in between the Fridays with more things that I was reading was sent directly from Allah as if to remind me, you know, I know you're lost right now, but don't forget about this thread. Don't let it go. I was literally on my knees crying. My face was wet because I realized like, that's it. There's not, there's no reason not to do it at all. There we go. <laughs> Salamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Welcome to this video, my first video. In this video, I'm going to talk about how me, a guy who was born and raised in Toronto, Ontario and Canada, came to accept Islam in the middle of the global COVID-19 pandemic. Ooh. Um, okay. So it, toward the beginning of the pandemic, I remember seeing something that really left and continues to leave a deep impression on me. And what that was, was these outpourings on social media and in, in person too, of just vitriol and anger of people who were lashing out at others that they didn't approve of, you know, just on tirades on on Facebook statuses about how, you know, don't you, don't you know how stupid we think that you are when we see that you're not wearing a mask walking down the street? Uh, literally, that was one of them, you know. And what shocked me about it wasn't just this level of anger and judgment and hostility, but that these statements were coming from people who I thought of as being very spiritual, very compassionate, very intelligent, people that I knew very well in some cases. And I couldn't believe how blind these people were being to just how judgmental and self-righteous they were. But within a couple milliseconds of me making that observation, it was also very clear that, hey, wait a second, Damien, you're just judging them for judging others. Like psychologically, what's happening in your brain is exactly the same thing. And I thought I was very astute for identifying that this was a spiritual problem. This was primarily above and beyond anything else. This was a spiritual crisis. Because otherwise, how could these people be lashing out at their brothers and sisters in this very, I thought, childish way? But again, I was quick to realize that it wasn't their spiritual problem. It was really my spiritual problem. I was the one that needed to get right with God, right? And so that became very clear to me, but I didn't really know what to do about it. Well, um, so this would have been about April 2020, right after the first lockdown, but during very much in the middle of the first wave of COVID in Toronto. And there wasn't a lot of dating, but somehow during that wave, um, I started a relationship with a Muslim woman. I think a lot of reverts will maybe identify with this, that a relationship is a big stone on the path to their surrender, as it were, a big tile on the path. And for me, my relationship with this person really led me to see just how ignorant I was about the religion. And she sent me some things that would become other huge tiles on my path. Specifically, one of the big things that she sent me that just was like an earthquake in my world that I just thought was so shocking was exactly like this, revert stories on YouTube where I saw people from my own backyard, people from thousands of miles away, people who looked like me, people who didn't look like me, uh, talking about how they came to find Islam. And I just thought, wow. <laughs> and you gotta understand growing up here in Toronto, like we're sort of brought up to think that we have a respect for every culture and every religion. But what that chauvinism that we develop around this notion of just how tolerant we think we are obscures is how ignorant we really are of other faith traditions. And most of the people walking around, whether they are believers in God or total atheists, will have some idea about Jesus, right? We all know about Jesus. Everybody's familiar with this cru crucifixion story. Uh, everybody's familiar with the, the baby in the manger and the wise men and the Last Supper. Like most average everyday white people walking around will know a lot about Jesus. What do they really know about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? In my case, very little, like, uh, like next to nothing. And, you know, so between being in this relationship and realizing how ignorant I was and wanting to understand this person who I loved very much, and also the fact that we were talking about getting married and starting a family, we were never engaged, but she and I were having these conversations, right? 
And that all led me to really want to learn more about Islam. So because it was the first wave and a lot of things were still, a lot of non-essential services were still locked down, that meant the mosques as well. As far as I knew, the mosques were all closed. So I wrote the same email to three different mosques in my area. And the email was the same. It said, hey, I'm, I want to learn more about this religion. Is the mosque going to be opening up anytime soon? Can I come? You know, and I got one response. So two of them didn't write me back and the third one did. And the response I got was, I don't know, Damien, when we're going to be opening up again, but we are offering Juma services every Friday on Zoom and they are inclusive services that are welcoming to non-Muslims as well key line and that was uh that was a big in for me that was another big tile on my path right and so i started going to juma every friday i would usually with my camera off i would just basically be a passive observer and just watch and learn and with every khutbah i would dispel a little bit more of my ignorance and my ideas would start to flesh out and more and more of my ignorance would also be revealed for example I had no idea what the Quran was. I thought it was like the Muslim Bible or something. I did not realize that this was the direct word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, right? And that blew my mind. My mind was getting blown every Friday and in between the Fridays with more things that I was reading. So I was learning a lot at that time. At that time, I started learning Arabic on Duolingo and I was just falling in love with the language, you know, it's a beautiful language. Um, and so more of my ignorance was being dispelled and a lot of you know very synchronistic or coincidental things were happening in that time in my life for example an atheist friend of mine sent me the show rami by the comedian rami youssef and that would be a big tile on my path it was profoundly educational in a maybe a little bit of a weird way but i learned a lot watching it another one was finding out about this writer michael muhammad knight which is again a, a bit of a contra controversial figure but um but he taught me a lot he really did so, you know, I was learning and I was growing and there was a threshold that I passed where I realized that even if my relationship with this woman didn't last, huh, I was probably going to become Muslim. Interesting. I sort of noted that. And, you know, it would end up being a little bit of a foreshadowing because, spoiler alert, you know, the relationship did not last and we broke up and she ended the relationship. And when it ended, I was just like devastated, like shattered you know my world was ending and this family that we were talking about poof it was gone and uh, I was just heartbroken right and there was two weeks where two weeks where I just decided decided I was just gonna wallow in the pain I was gonna drink I was gonna smoke weed I was gonna do anything to kill the pain and that's pretty much what I did and there was another big tile on my path when I was walking back from the cannabis dispensary near my house on queen street west to i just bought some weed i was going to go home and smoke my sorrow away and as i was walking down the sidewalk i passed by these two hijabi girls and one of them i noticed was a white girl she was uh, freckled she was ginger she was not you know a light-skinned light-skinned arab she was like caucasian fully caucasian and to me that was um put it this way that's a rare enough site in downtown toronto that for me at that time there was no question whatsoever in my mind that this was not some kind of random happenstance at all i really felt then and frankly i feel even more strongly now that that was just one more of these tiles on my path that decreasingly seemed random they seemed less and less like random stones you know, that I was staggering around on and more and more like carefully laid tiles that were taking me very decisively to a specific destination. I really felt like that site was sent directly from Allah as if to remind me, you know, I know you're lost right now, but don't forget about this thread. Don't let it go. And even at that time, I I'd still felt like I was probably going to become Muslim, but in a very like one day you know one day down the road that that's probably going to happen kind of way not in any like clear or immediate way but i threw it all even through my two weeks of wallowing i kept going to juma every friday and i kept learning 
And the more I learned about the religion, the more I felt like I was getting a specific answer to my query about, you know, I know that I'm in spiritual crisis. It's not just those people out there being judgmental. It's me. I know I need to get closer to God because I already believed in God long before this. Um, and it occurred to me more and more that the religion of Islam would be a very clear and specific way that I could do that. So, among other things, for example, the five daily prayers, I saw as being, on one hand, totally substantial. It made so much sense to me. Someone who sits down and meditates for 10 minutes every day is going to have more mindfulness. Similarly, someone who, with sincere presence of mind and sincere presence of attention, you know, commits to the five daily prayers is going to get closer to, closer to God. That just made sense to me. And so... You know, I was learning how to do it. I was learning how to pray. I was learning the recitations. I was memorizing the short surahs. I was doing that. But with that came a certain intimidation as well. And in a way, that was like the last wall that needed to come down that was standing between me and actually formally reverting. And the intimidation was, you know, what's the point of doing this? Because I'm just going to take my shahada and try to do the five daily prayers and then I'm going to start missing them and then I'm going to feel guilty and then I'm going to, you know, get caught in this cycle of shame and self-loathing and I'll be trapped into it because I've officially declared myself Muslim. Like, I don't want to do that. Well, wouldn't you know it, but coincidentally, later in the same week of me thinking about all this stuff, there was a khutbah at Juma, which is like the sermon, for those of you who don't know, that was all about the five daily prayers. And the sum takeaway for me of that was that if you miss your prayers, it's not that Allah is cranky <laughs> because, you know, he didn't get what you owed him. It's that you lose. You are the one who suffers. And if you go weeks where you're really committing to them and you're really showing up for them and you are really in them with sincerity and presence of heart and attention, you're the one who benefits. And if you go weeks where you're missing them, you're late, or you're maybe you're doing all five of them, but you are just distracted, you don't care, you're going through the motions, you are the one who suffers. It's for you. And that at the time just made so much sense to me. It just became so clear that that this was it. And I remember my camera was off at the Zoom meeting. I was literally on my knees crying. My face was wet because I realized like, that's it. There's not. There's no reason not to do it at all. And you know, people who have known me for a long time will know that I'm a pretty impetuous person. I can kind of be impulsive at times, and I know that about myself. There's a lot of passion, but also a lot of impulsivity. So I wanted to sleep on it. So I remember I had a bath after that Juma, and I was just thinking, like, wow, you know, is, am I really going to do this? Friday night came and went, I slept on it. Saturday, felt the same way. I woke up, felt the same way, but I slept on it again. Sunday, I went to work, and while I was at work, the store manager came into my department and was talking to my department manager, and as soon as they finished up, I said, oh, do you mind if I steal you for a minute of your time? And it was almost like an unseen hand was just puppeting me, and I just calmly explained to her when we went outside, you know, listen, this coming Friday, I'm probably going to be coming Muslim, so I'm going to need a place to pray at the store, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but it has to be private or semi-private, and it can't be a bathroom, so just that's what's up, just FYI. Of course, she was supportive, and I went back into, into my place of work, and from the work computer, I emailed the organizer of the Juma Circle, and I said, you know, I want to take my shahada this Friday. Boom. So that was that, and then I pretty much just couldn't wait for Friday to roll around before I formally gave Shahada the declaration of faith. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. And that was October 23rd, 2020. So pretty soon it'll be one year as a Muslim. I can honestly say that it was. The best decision that I ever made, but I don't really take credit for it. I really see it as the grace of Allah that brought me to surrender. And I've highlighted some moments in my life that were 
really close leading up to that moment. But looking back on it, I can see that this path extends to childhood. I can see all kinds of moments in my life that I never would have seen any connection between. But now I see that this is the brilliance, the brilliance of the most brilliant storyteller peppering my path and bringing me to this moment of surrender in a way that I was ready for, in a way that I was primed for, in really the most gentle and beautifully touching way. And there are so many tiles on this path, right? If you've seen the movie, I'll finish with this. If you've seen the movie Slumdog Millionaire, you know that the movie takes place with uh, this kid who's at a trivia competition, this who wants to be a millionaire competition, right? And he's getting asked all these ran super obscure trivia questions that he couldn't possibly know. Like, who are the three musketeers, whatever, stuff that he would have no way of knowing. But how does he know? How does he get them all right? We know how, as the viewer, because of the way the story is told, that all of these moments in his life that would never have had anything to do with one another have been brought together and they all coalesce, giving him this perfect training program for this one specific competition. In other words, it was at this moment that all of these totally separated and unrelated elements came together and were actually totally connected in this very perfect, sublime, an incredible way. Uh, another metaphor, of course, that I've already been using is the tiles of the path. If you're walking around lost and intoxicated and you look down at one stone and you, and you look at it and you look at another one, you don't see them as connected until finally you get to this gate and you realize that they weren't just random stones, they were a path leading you directly to this one destination. And that's, you know, how I got there. So, um, I think I'll probably make another video about my first year as a Muslim. Spoiler alert, people have been incredibly supportive. Uh, the Muslim brothers and sisters who have met me in this past year have really kept this motif going. And now I don't believe in chance, I don't believe in coincidence, right? And it didn't stop when I took my Shahada. It's just kept going and the story has kept building. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for watching this video. And I'm very curious and grateful for your feedback. Assalamu alaikum, bye.